We must fix that. We must close the wealth gap. We're at the bottom of every single statistic that matters in this country. We must fix it. And as I said before, wherever black people are going in the 21st century, it will be because black people will take them there. So we must not have, when another congressional caucus meeting, and, 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 and Jim was right, I think this is the premier event of the caucus, and not have solutions. This is my 23rd conversation about this over 32 years. And of course, at the end, people come up and say, well, what are we going to do? Well, as Eric pointed out, there's some stuff on your seats that we are doing. Now, this stuff is, you can ask me that, Eric. Take a look at it. These are things that we are doing. We're not talking about them. We built the infrastructure to do them. First is we need to save our children. So what we have done in phrasing it, as you know, there are 52,000 top black professionals, business owners, and community leaders in our network. We're 25 years old. We're the largest black network in America. We are proactive. We're about education and training around creating work and jobs and economic development in, 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 in the context of our community. We have two simple goals to make black people the number one employer of black people in the 21st century. And we've been working on that for 25 years, and we'll work on that for the next 100 years. So that's what it will take. It will take another three to five generations to make sure that that happens. And, and, and secondly, uh, our goal is to help black people build wealth that can be transferred into generation. But first, we want to help our children. We've built the infrastructure. We've built the network. So we've now built a network for our young people. If you're 17, if you're a student, 17 to 25 years old, you can sign up for free membership in our network and get everything that we produce, including all of our books, come to our conference, at our networking conference in, in June, free of charge. But you must be a student. I didn't say college student. You could be a high school student, you could be taking vocational training, you could be taking technical training, you could be getting a community college, doesn't matter. You must be a student because education is the future for our people. Now, if you're a really good student, a B plus student, you can come to our conference for nothing. This will provide you access to 52,000 top black professionals, business owners, and community leaders to answer your questions, to look, help you look for jobs, to give you guidance and training. It's free, it costs nothing. We're committed to recruiting one million students to this network. It's free. This is something that we can do. No one has to do this for us. We can do that. Wealth is huge now. God didn't put us here to make money, though. He put us here to make a difference and to add value. And then when you're making a difference and adding value, you will then make money. You will not be able to get out of the way of it. But wealth is huge in the context of our community. Why is this closing this wealth gap so, so important? Because A, we're the only culture in the history of humankind that put political empowerment before economic empowerment. Last year, we elected over 9,000 black public officials in America, and we're still at the bottom of the educational and economic people. What does that mean? It means that you can't do it by politics alone. How dare we put that kind of pressure on our political leadership? But again, we were, we're no fools when we were going at night, but not last night. And we do understand that we're all impacted by public policy, and we're all impacted by the politics of inclusion. So yes, we must continue to use the power of our vote to empower those who empower us. So economic development is hugely important. Why? Because your wealth will determine where you live. Where you live will determine where your children go to school. Where your children go to school will determine their higher education, and their higher education will determine their lifelong earnings. And your children's lifelong earnings will determine where your grandchildren live. And where your grandchildren live will determine where your grandchildren go to school. And where your grandchildren go to school will determine your grandchildren's higher education. And your grandchildren's higher education will determine their lifelong earnings. 
Do you understand the cycle of the property? Yes. That's number two. Number three. In case no one has told you, we live in a democratic, market-based economy. And in a democratic, market-based economy, the only color that really matters is green. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what it is. So until our pile of green is as big and as high and as deep and as wide and as leveraged as any other cultural group's pile of green, we will never be considered an equal at the table of democratic capitalism. That's number three. And finally, number four, at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, when we finish pontificating ad nauseum about our issues, somebody's got to write a check. Our Jewish brothers and sisters can write a check. Our Asian brothers and sisters can write a check. Our Arab brothers and sisters, whether you agree with them or not, can write a check. We can't write a check. Do you realize that we cannot even convene unless somebody else writes that check? We must fix that That's right. in the 21st century. We have the tools to do it. We've created a program called the Moses Project. On the back of the Moses Project are 10 financial commitments for financial freedom for black people. We're trying to recruit a million black people to save a minimum of $50 a month. That's all? $50 a month. There are 10 principles. Look at this to become financially free over the next three years, excluding mortgage. So it's a program. It's there. It costs nothing. All we have to do is get people to recognize it and to sign up for the program. So we have a program for our young people. We've also put this program on a cell phone. So we know that young people use cell phones. So if they want to access this network, all they have to do is connect to our cell phone, FraserNet.Lobi, and they can access all of this for nothing. Download all of my books, all of the teachings of all of the wonderful people in this network for nothing. We have a very special sister in the audience here this morning, Maggie Anderson. I don't know if you're familiar with Maggie. She is the founder, co-founder with her husband of the Empowerment Experiment out of Chicago. To Ivy League, Maggie, please stand with me to see you. To Ivy Leaguers, Harvard, University of Chicago, for committing their life to making sure that whatever dollars they earn was invested back into black businesses in the Chicago area. Go on her website, the EE Experiment, incredible what she has done to demonstrate what we can do when we recycle dollars, and we can recycle dollars, and now she has created a national initiative around the empowerment experiment. So there are things being done, and we must engage. We must fix these problems. I want you to repeat after me this little mantra. I want you to say, it's not about me. Say that. It's not about me. It's about we. It's about we. It takes teamwork, it takes teamwork. to make the dream work. To make the dream work. We have the timber. We have December. Let us fill. Let us fill. Thank you. Well, we're going to do things a little differently this year. We're going to get right to questions. We, as you know,